So I'm going to introduce you to uh, the most common screen reader out there, and that's called JAWS, which stands for Job Access with Speech. It happens to also be one of the most expensive. It's over $1,000 for JAWS. I'm going to go ahead and load it now. JAWS for Windows and Ready. Start button to open. Press Enter. I'll just turn the volume up here a little bit. So, screen reading technology and the internet is not very exciting for uh, a visual user. You know, it's it's um, it's, it's strictly auditory, so you're not going to see a lot of changes other than the the the, uh, uh, the speech here. So what I'm going to do is open up Internet Explorer. Menu, Internet, Windows 11, S. What I did is I pressed the Windows key, which gave me the uh, Start menu, and I pressed Down Arrow once to Internet Explorer. Enter, leaving menu, Windows Internet Explorer, 43 percent, 100 percent. Okay, so 100 percent. What I did is I pressed Control. What what Jaws would do is what Jaws would do is continually read that website unless I press Control. So Control is sort of like the shut up key for Jaws. Uh, basically, a lot of the key, the screen readers function in the same way. Uh, and again, it's important to know some of the basic elements of a website: um, links, twenty-five percent, headings text, graphics, 20. frames. Those are some essential elements of a website that a person using a screen reader is going to is going to need to know. So there are there are other screen readers other than JAWS. Um, another very common screen reader is Window Eyes. 35%. And uh, HAL, which is more common in Europe. And a little later, I'm going to show you a, uh, a free screen reader. From it's called System Access, and so I'm going to give you some basics here on JAWS first. So, so the home page is msn.com. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Insert and the F7 F7 key here. JAWS dialog, link to list dialog, link to list view, search colon 17 of 219. 17 of 219. So that tells me there's 219 links here, and I'm on the 17th one. As you can see, it can be very quickly um, uh, a little bit overwhelming as far as uh, comprehending everything that's going on on the page. So one very important aspect of web browsing for a person with a visual impairment is knowing what they're looking for and becoming familiar with that specific website. Okay, so I'm going to press the letter W for weather. W, weather. Okay, and it happened to land on weather. I could have gone down arrow several times, because like it said, there were a couple hundred links here, but I just pressed the first letter of the link I wanted, which is weather. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter on that. Enter, weather link. So you have to know that there's a weather link, or suspect that there's a weather link on the site you're going to. Exactly, yeah. And that they've labeled it weather. And that they've labeled it weather. As opposed to current forecast. weather, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So there's a lot of guesswork here. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so um, what I'm going to do is, is press the letter E here. And that's going to bring me to the edit boxes here on this website. So I'm just going to do some exploring. E. Oh. E. Virtual PC cursor. What I did actually with JAWS uh, 10, it puts you in um, edit mode right away. So I press the plus key on the keypad, which took me out of the edit mode. E. Oh. What does it mean e. to be in edit mode? Virtual PC cursor. Wrapping the top. Web search. So the difference. Um, there's a lot of keystroke combinations with JAWS. For example, um, the letter C on a website stands for combo box. The letter E stands for edit box. Uh, X stands for checkbox. However, C for combo box, if you're looking for um, cars, for example, in Google, and you're typing to, starting to type out cars, 
the computer needs to know whether you're wanting to type out the actual letter C in an edit box or that C represents a combo box. So that's the difference between being in in edit mode or not. What's uh, a combo box? Combo box is short for a combination box. So this is very intuitive. When, if you've ever ordered anything online using a credit card, it may have a, a drop-down box that says Visa, MasterCard, uh, American Express. That's a combo box. Anything with a combination of different items so w is it the same thing always as a drop-down menu? It's similar to a drop-down menu. A drop-down menu can also be um, some spin boxes can also be a drop-down menu. Okay. And spin boxes is uh, the kind of box that has an up and down arrow with numbers in it. Yeah. Okay. So it can get fairly complex fairly quickly. As you can see, there's a lot of terminology here that that goes along with this to to understand and break down a website, but definitely doable with, with some mm -hmm. training and some practice. It's, it's definitely, mm -hmm. definitely doable. So all of these things are hard-coded in the website, then, a, a, a drop-down menu or combo box or a spin box or an edit window. All of these things are just defined as what they are in, in the website, and a program like JAWS is able to identify those. Correct. Yeah. So those are those are very basic elements, very similar to a dialog box. Like if you think of the print uh, dialog box uh, when you're printing a document in Word, mm -hmm. it has all of those elements to it. It has a mm -hmm. combo box. It has a check box. Mm -hmm. It has um, the edit box to type in the range of pages you want to print out. Mm -hmm. So those are all very common, commonly used. Um, aspects of, of a website. Mm -hmm. Just for time's sake, I'll show you a website that's very accessible here. Now, in order to change the website, I'm using a standard Windows keystroke, Alt plus D. Alt D, address edit combo, HTTP colon slash slash web. Okay, and that places me on the uh, website address. And some people use Control plus O, some people use Alt plus D, some pe people use F6. Those all basically do the same thing. Now I'm going to go to a website uh, from the American Foundation for the Blind, AFB.org. AFB, period, O, R, G, enter, AFB.org, 2%, 100%, American Foundation for the Blind, dash home page, page had eight headings and 67 links, American Foundation for the Blind, dash home page, same job. Okay, I'm going to hit control. So it gave me some very valuable information there. It said, page has eight headings, and I think it said 67 links or something, mm -hmm. but it immediately gives me the number of headings and the number of links. What's and a heading? Is that a part of a menu structure, a navigation menu, or...? So what a heading is, is it's actually text. It's, it's larger text than, than just the straight text, and um, headings can be very easily accessed by a screen reader like JAWS whereas links may not all necessarily be in a meaningful linear order. Uh, headings typically represent uh, a category or a section of the website, and not all websites even have headings. So a heading, visually, it would just look like larger text, non-link text, um, whereas links are text that you can click on or access to move you to another website. Okay, so this is actually a fairly well-designed uh, website. It's, it's uh, laid out very, very logically. And again, with those shortcut keys, I can just press the letter H here. Headline heading level one. Learn about colon heading level one. Information for colon heading level one. What does AFD do? Heading level one. Quick links colon heading level one. Where can I find? Alt plus W heading level one. AFD community heading level one. Quick max heading level one. Okay, so I'm just cycling through the different headings just, just by pressing the letter H. If I wanted to back up, I could do shift plus H. AFD community heading level one. Where can I find? Alt plus W heading level. Okay, so that's a very quick way of, of accessing that. 